So if we knew the periodic potential, Vp of r here, we could solve our resulting one electron Schrodinger equation. And we know that the solution would have to be in Bloch form. So there would be a unit cell function that would be the same in every unit cell of the crystal, and there would be a propagating wave part, and we know we are only allowed specific values of k in here. We would solve this equation, we would get eigenenergies, we would get eigenfunctions in Bloch form. So we would calculate the energies for all of the possible states for each k value. And the result of that would be something we call a band structure. Now, there are various different band structure calculation methods we could use, but many of them make a similar kind of approximation. They guess or use an intelligent estimate as to what this potential is. Sometimes they approximate it in some kind of a way. They calculate a band structure and then they compare the results of the calculation with actual experimental measurements. It's possible to measure certain of the energies, for example, in the actual band structure of materials. And then they might adjust their choice of the potential so that the model they're coming up with agrees better with the data. And the result is that we construct what we call a band structure. We are starting off, as I said, presuming that we know Vp of r, or have some reasonable estimate of it. We choose one of our allowed values of k here, and for simplicity, we're going to restrict ourselves to one dimension for the moment. So we'll solve our equation to get energy eigen solutions, and we'll plot them on this diagram. We are going to be plotting the eigenvalues on the vertical axis, and we're going to choose all of the different possible values of k along the horizontal axis here, and we'll get a set of dots that will fill up this diagram for us. So here's our result. For example, calculating for k equals zero on this energy scale we happen to be plotting here, we have four dots, four eigenenergy solutions we might come up with. Then we would continue with other values of k. So let's choose the next allowed value of k, and we solve for the energy eigenvalues there, and then the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and so on. And we can repeat this for the negative values of k. One thing you'll notice here is that on this diagram I'm sketching, we have a mirror symmetry here. For every state on the right, there's one on the left with the same energy. And I'll describe where this kind of symmetry comes from later on. Now, if we worked with a larger crystal, we would get more allowed values of k. So we could fill in this diagram a little bit more, or an even larger crystal would give us more dots. And for a large crystal, this set of dots effectively becomes like sets of lines. So we can join up the dots here with a line. A line is just something we make up, it doesn't really necessarily exist, but if the dots are very close it may be easier to draw the lines between them. And we refer to this group of dots in this picture as a band. So this is one band here, here's another one, here's another one, and here's another one. And incidentally the number of k states in a band is equal to the number of unit cells in the crystal. In practice, we'll just show the lines here and not the dots usually. As we've said, there are multiple bands in this structure here, in this band structure. In fact, in a complete band structure, there would in principle be an infinite number of bands. But usually only a few of them really matter very much for our problem or our device of interest. For example, Perhaps just the highest valence bands and the lowest conduction bands really matter very much to us. And in each band, we only have to plot k values from minus pi over a to plus pi over a. This particular range is known as the first Brillouin zone. So that's a French pronunciation, Brillouin. I've drawn the band structure diagram here for our Brillouin zone again. If we continue to larger k, 
all that happens is that the band structure just repeats itself. So now we're plotting from pi over a to 3 pi over a, for example, and the band structure is just the same as it was before, just moved over. And similarly, if we go to negative values, we just repeat again, and we could keep on going to higher positive values or to higher negative values, and the band structure would just keep repeating. We would have multiple Brillouin zones. And this particular kind of picture would be called an extended zone scheme. But we only really need to plot one Brillouin zone, and we know what the entire extended zone scheme would actually look like. So we'll just plot the first Brillouin zone in a band structure. Each of these bands, loosely speaking, corresponds to a different atomic state in the constituent atoms, or at least some orthogonal combination of those original atomic states. For different points out along the k direction here, in fact, these combinations may be somewhat different, but it's still true that the bands are essentially formed from the atomic states as the atoms are pushed together to make the crystal. Now, as I mentioned before, the band structure that we've drawn is symmetric about k equals zero. Why have we done that? Well, this common symmetry is quite easy to prove, and we're going to give a simple version of that proof here. Suppose that the Bloch function satisfies our Schrodinger equation for a specific value of k. So for that specific value, we have a specific unit cell function, and we have a specific propagating wave, the e to the i k dot r. Note incidentally that these unit cell functions are in principle different for different values of k. So if we write out our Schrodinger equation here, we have the Hamiltonian operator operating on the wave function is equal to the eigenenergy for that k times the wave function. And this, of course, is for some specific band we have chosen to work with. And our Hamiltonian is just all of this from the Schrodinger equation, our del squared term and our potential term here. Now, we can take the complex conjugate of both sides of this equation. And we note that the Hamiltonian operator, because it's her mission, is actually equal to its own complex conjugate. And we know that ek is necessarily real. So therefore, we deduce, just by taking the complex conjugate of both sides of this equation, that the same Hamiltonian operating on this other function, the complex conjugate of the one we first thought of, is also a solution for the same value of energy, the same eigenenergy. So this same eigenenergy has got two possible solutions. And if we look at this wave function here, we see that it, of course, is also in block form, but it's in block form for minus k. This function here we know is periodic with the unit cell periodicity, and for the moment we were labeling it as uk star, the complex conjugate of a function we'd previously worked out. But now we know that this function, since this whole wave function is in block form, can also be considered as u minus k of r. So we are saying that for every solution with wave vector k and energy ek, there is one with wave vector minus k and the same energy. Hence, the band structure is symmetric about k equals zero. And we can choose to write this, as we were saying, the complex conjugate psi star of k and r, which we know must also be a solution. It's got the e to the minus i k dot r in it. It's got this function which is periodic with unit cell periodicity. And we can call this the wave function corresponding to minus k. And we can call this unit cell function, we can write it as u minus k of r. This equivalence of the energies for k and minus k is known as Cramer's degeneracy. Note that once we include spin, and we've not dealt with that yet, the picture gets slightly more complicated and the proof gets slightly more sophisticated. 
And what will happen is that these two states will have opposite spin. But often spin makes no difference to the energy, so we get back to this symmetric picture here. Hence, bands often have minima or maxima at k equals zero, because they have to be mirror symmetric in some specific sense about k equals zero. <laughs> Thank you.